this lesson is going to go over how to graph a linear equation. You should have already done some exploring of the coordinate plane, so you're familiar with some of the vocabulary like the origin and the axes and ordered pairs. So today we're going to extend upon that and learn how to graph, what I, like I said, linear equations. So first let's get some vocabulary down. The first term I want to look at is actually linear equation. Within that word linear, I'd like you to underline the word line because that's really the key for understanding this definition. A linear equation is an equation that makes a straight line when it is graphed. Now below this linear equation, we have three different forms that you need to be familiar with. We'll be working with all of these in our next unit. The first is standard form. It's ax plus by equals c. Now in this equation, the a, the b, and the c are just numbers or coefficients. You will, when you see an equation in standard form, you'll see numbers in their place, and you'll see the x and the y left as variables. The next form is slope-intercept form, and this is one that you probably recognize from previous classes, the y equals mx plus b. m stands for the slope, and b stands for the y-intercept. The last one I'm guessing is a new form for you. This is called point-slope form. In this equation, the x1 and the y1 make up a point or an ordered pair. And then the m, just like it stood for in the previous equation, stands for the slope. So that's really how we get the name point-slope form, because it gives us a point, it gives us a slope. What we're going to work on today is actually making a table of values. And this is just simply a tool that will help us display our ordered pairs, and then we're going to take those ordered pairs and put them on a graph. When we graph lines, there are a couple of guidelines. You want to start by labeling the x and the y axes. x is always the horizontal, y is always the vertical. And a lot of times, the axes will actually be labeled for you. Second, you want to make sure that a scale is labeled. Sometimes the numbers will be in there, sometimes they're not. If nothing is labeled, we usually assume that the scale goes up by 1. Sometimes we won't have enough room to go up by 1, so you may have to rescale and go by 2s or 5s or 10s. It just depends on your situation. Here's a big one. Whenever you're graphing a line in this class, you must use a straight edge, which is just a fancy name for a ruler. Um, we will not accept lines that are drawn by hand. And lastly, when you start to connect your points to make a line, we don't want these tiny little lines. We want lines that extend through the graph. And to show that they actually extend beyond the graph, we're going to put arrows on the end. And this is probably something that you're familiar with. So let's get started with our table. The equation that we're looking at here, I want you to recognize, is actually in slope-intercept form. And this is a really nice form to start our table. You can kind of see the skeleton of the table here. In the first column, you're going to put an x because that's where we're going to put the x-coordinate. Now, the x value is actually the independent variable. That's just a vocabulary word that you'll hear, on, hear about from time to time in previous classes. So x is called the independent variable. In the middle column, we're going to put the equation, y equals 2x minus 3. And then in the final column, we're going to put our ordered pair, x, y. Now, because x is the independent variable, you can let x be whatever you want it to be. Now keep in mind, we want to fit this line on our ordered pair, or on our coordinate plane, which is a 10 by 10 grid. So we want to stick to numbers that are going to give us results that are on the graph. So a nice range of numbers is to go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. It doesn't mean you always have to pick these. You can pick whatever value you want for x, but this is usually a pretty good choice. So let's plug negative 2 in. The way this works is if we know x is negative 2, we substitute that into the equation, then we figure out what y is. So you just write this out, 2 times negative 2 minus 3. And you can do this in your head. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. This is what makes up our ordered pair. So in the last column, you'd write the point negative 2, negative 7. Then you just repeat this process. You plug in a negative 1 y equals 2 times negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 2 minus 3, which is negative 5. So our ordered pair is negative 1, negative 5. It might be a good time now to pause the video and try some of these on your own and then catch up with us and check your answers. We'll keep going here, though. If we plug a 0 in, 2 times 0 minus 3 gives us a negative 3. So we have the point 0, negative 3. 
plug in your 1. 2 times 1 minus 3 gives us a negative 1. And lastly, 2 times 2 minus 3 gives us 1. So you have the point 2, 1. You might notice the pattern here in your table, and you should. Um, you might notice that we're going up by 2s. That's no coincidence. Um, if you think back to what I talked about with slope-intercept form, the number in front of the x is the slope. Um, so that number is 2. That tells us what we should be going up by in our table. So just a little connection there. Now, to actually graph the line, what you have to do is you have to put each of these ordered pairs on the grid. So we label our axes there with x and y. We don't have to label a scale on this one because we're just going to assume that we're going by 1s. And the first point, negative 2, negative 7, means from the origin, I go left 2 and down 7. So we'll put a point there. Then we're going to graph negative 1, negative 5, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 1, and 2, 1. Now, here you're going to have to do as we say and not as we do. Um, on the smart board, it's very tricky to, to get a line in there. We can't use the ruler because it won't understand that. So we're going to draw it in by hand, but don't ever draw it in by hand yourself. Make sure that you guys use a ruler. Notice how we're extending the line all the way through the graph and including those arrows to show that it does go beyond the graph. All right, let's try one more example. And I want you to look at this equation. And notice it's not set up as nicely as our previous one. Um, this equation is in standard form. And this would be really ugly to try and plug values in because we'd have to do just a lot of work. So we're going to do um, the work ahead of time. And we're actually going to do something called getting y by itself. So I have a little space here for us to show our work. And we want to just change the standard form equation back into slope-intercept. So we're going to just solve this for y like we would any other equation. So if we want to get y by itself, we have to get rid of the 3x. Since that's a positive 3x, we're going to subtract 3x from both sides. Um, so on the left-hand side, bring down the negative 6y. And just pay attention to that negative. A lot of times when people drop the y term, if there's a minus in front of it, they forget to bring it down. So make sure you bring that down. Now on the right-hand side, be careful. You cannot combine those to say that the answer is 9x. Those are not like terms. So simply put the x term first. So that's a minus 3x. And then the plus 12. The last step to get y by itself is to divide everything by the negative 6. Okay, now you may want to split that up. We're going to divide each individual term by the negative 6. You can write it either way, but I think it might help you to split it up. And when we simplify this, we get y equals, now 3 over 6. Those negatives are going to cancel, and the 3 over 6 is going to give us 1 half. So it's 1 half x. And then 12 divided by negative 6 is negative 2. So this is now another form of our equation that we can use to help us set up our ordered pairs. Now I'm going to think ahead here. When I start plugging in x values, I kind of don't want to deal with decimals. So if I want to take half of x, if x was an even number, it would be pretty easy to um, take half of it. So instead of doing negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, I'm going to choose negative 4 negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. So I'm still going to have that pattern that shows up because I'm having a pattern with the x's, but it's going to be a little bit easier for me to calculate. And remember, there's no law that says what you have to plug in for x. You're free to choose those. So let's go ahead and plug these in, just like we did before. Half of negative 4 minus 2. Well, half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Do the same thing here, plug in the negative 2. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 take away 2 is negative 3. Plug in the 0. Half of 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is a negative 2. Plug in your 2. y equals 1 half of 2 minus 2. Half of 2 is 1. 1 take away 2 is negative 1. And lastly, plug in your 4. Half of 4 minus 2. Half of 4 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So our point is 4, 0. Now you may say, we're going up by 1s here, but our slope is a half. Well, imagine, though, we're going up actually by 2s because our x 
coordinates went by two, so you're not going to see the exact same pattern because we changed up the x scale a little bit. And if that just confused you, don't worry about what I just said. We'll get to that later. So now we're going to go ahead and graph. We labeled our axes. And we're going to start plotting these points. So we graph negative 4, negative 4, negative 2, negative 3, 0, negative 2. Okay, once you get your five points on there, and notice, I didn't mention this, but we're always doing five points. That's just kind of a standard rule. You have to do enough points to guarantee that you're, you're getting a line here. And then do your best here um, on the smart board. We can't use the ruler again, but you guys should take out your straight edge here, connect these points, arrows on the end, and you're done.